Welcome to ADF TV. My name is Frank Limpius and I'm from the Oracle J Developer and ADF Product Management Team. In this session, which is the first out of three, we talk about personalization and customization. I'm not quite sure if you're aware that as soon as you write any sort of customer facing application, you're taking part in a kind of a popularity contest. And that is manifested by look and feel, by usability, and as well as the ability for users to make themselves a home. And I'm pretty sure in your experience you had situations where some of the people that you work with or that you built the application for were quite pleased and happy with how you did it and others were not so happy. And you come to the conclusion that obviously you can only please most people some of the time and some people most of the time and the other way around as well. So how can you change that? How if it was possible to at least please the majority of your customers or users all of the time. And this has to do with the ability of an application to do or to behave and look as the customer wants it and not how the application developer has designed it. Well, there is a lot of debate about annotations where this metadata uh, being used in an application. And I don't want to go into this full discussion, but one of the advantages of metadata is that you can change metadata-driven content without recompiling the application, and that means without redeploying. Now, in ADF, everything is metadata, or you can say metadata rules or metadata is king. Idea Faces is a rich client component set, and you build it by putting metadata into a page. Same for data visualization components with ADF controller, in the end, it's all XML metadata. Same for ADF business components. Now, everything that is metadata, obviously, is a good candidate for customization or personalization. Typical use cases for personalization is where the user wants to make the user interface a home. So, they want to change the order in which specific items are displayed on the screen, or they just want to rearrange pop lists, or they just want to change columns in a table, or they want to remember the state of the disclosure of a panel box or of a panel splitter. Or, and I'm pretty sure you have seen this many times, where you can put in a custom query, a custom filter on by searching for products, and the system allows you to remember the search that you put in. This kind of things all belong to personalization because it helps the user to be more happy with the user interface and make the user interface more aligned to how the user wants to work and not how the developer wants the user to work. Now this is all personalization. Well, application personalization can be implemented in ADF faces quite easily and we get this functionality from Apache Trinidad, the MyFaces Trinidad components that we're basing ADF faces on. So what we can do is we can persist changes and the persistence is not coded by the developer because the developer is not anticipating how users want to have it. So users will just work with the application and then it's the component renderer that has the ability to remember change persistence. Yeah? So if I reorder the columns in a table then it's a render of the component that remembers the state. However, what you can do, and there's also a programming side on personalization because not everything will be automatically remembered by the component, but what you can do is you can change attribute values, just remember the disclosed or the closed state or the displayed state of a component, or you can even add or remove components dynamically uh, or reorder components. Maybe you have an input form and users want to first deal with the IDs of a form, so they just drag and drop this into a specific order that they like more than the order that you have before. Or you can just move components out of an existing container, like you have a dashboard and this dashboard has a sibling dashboard. Now you want to move panel boxes from one dashboard into another and you want to remember the state for the duration of the session or even beyond the application. Well, in IDF, if you go to the view controller project and you double click on the view controller project, in the properties there's an ADF view entry. If you click on that, you see the configuration options that are available to enable change persistence, well, to enable personalization. So you have the option to say you want to enable personalization for the duration of the session or with MDS. And you can also enable seeded customization. Now, seeded customization is something that the developer anticipates based on 
the time of the day based on the country the user is in, based on user preferences, based on anything you can think in Java. And that is what the second recording is all about. So this is about personalization, so everything the user can do. So let's have a look what personalization is without MDS. Well, without MDS, the component render components will actually remember a specific change and save it in a session object. So for as long as the user stays in the same session, things are remembered. So they're navigating from one view to the next, they come back and they see all the remembered state. However, as soon as they close the session, be it to re-authenticate or just to go home and start all over again the next day, this state is forgotten. With MDS, we can persist the change through the whole application lifecycle. So that is that you start working with an application, you persist changes, and then you move on, and the next day these changes are still there. The trick here is that as soon as you enable personalization with MDS, first of all, you need to have a repository, and we talk about this in the third re uh, recording, what that means. And then you have a little change in the ADF config file and in the WebXML file that now point to a different change persistent management instance. And this will make sure that now every personalized JSON becomes part of the ADF lifecycle. So within the lifecycle, we will persist all the changes that are previously kept in the session so that they span beyond application restarts. And of course, this can be filtered. You can tell which of the component types, tables, columns, input fields, you want to allow customization on for personalization in this regard. You can also mention which of the attributes you want to allow personalization on so that you don't have to go with an all-you-can-eat manner, which you don't want. And then there is an option on the individual component itself to override the family type setting. So imagine that for a table, you will allow that any table, users are allowed to change the columns, the index of the, or the row index or the order index of the column, and that should be remembered. But there's one table where you don't want to have this. Now in this case, you use the don't persist property on the columns that are in this table. And here, you put just the attribute for the column index in it. And then users can personalize all tables except for this table. So it's quite a fine-grained control that you set up here. I mentioned that you can program for change persistence. And there is a white paper that I will point out at the end of the second recording that you can read up on how to do it. The benefit of that is that you can go more controlled in regards to how to um, persist changes that are more complex than just like component changes like table reordering. Like the example I gave of having an input form and you reorder input fields. Now this is something that you can listen for and as soon as the reordering is happening, you will just code against the change persistence API using Java. So there are two options in personalization. One is what happens automatically and the other is what you as a developer could just accept and persist for the user. Now, this recording was all about personalization. So that is the user makes themselves a home. Now, the next recording is about customization, seeded customization, which means that the application looks and behaves differently based on conditions like who is the user, which user role is the user in, where's the location the user is in, the time of the day, and all kind of different um, indicators for customization that you can uh, look up using Java. And you will see in the second recording how that works.